Hi, this is Spencer from USA Gutter Services. I'd like to use robotic arms in my gutter cleaning business. So to learn a little bit more about them, I bought this Adept Robotic Arm Kit for Arduino. It was about $68. The idea is I'll practice on this thing and then I'll either get or build a larger robotic arm that I can use for practical applications. I've just opened the the box, moving this packaging foam out of the way. This is so we have um, some servo motors, lost servo motors. That's a good thing. This is a five degree of freedom robotic arm kit. Looks like this is probably um, uh, a bearing, horizontal bearing. Looks like we have a whole lot of screws, maybe some suction cups. Don't really know what this is. <clears throat> Let me have some electronic component. Holder for the batteries. Um, a cable. Oh. Uh, a driver. Another cable. Some sort of like sheathing for cables. Then, it's like a chip right here. I think these are probably the actual structural components. Well, it even comes with the screwdriver. So, I think now I just have to find where the instructions are. So now I'm going to take the, the base, and the first step is to attach the suction cups to the, the base. The base is made of acrylic. So I have to peel this, peel this tape off to free the free the base from the the frame and then there's this protective sheet to peel off as well. Which I've done. So now just need to insert the screw on the back of the suction cups through the base and then use the nuts to attach the screw. Now that I've started this, I see I, think I see why they provided this little wrench. Tighten these nuts.
the next step is to uh, attach this OLED to the drive and to do that we're going to use two of the M2 by 18 screws along with two of the M2 nuts and we'll use two M2.5 uh, by 11 copper it looks to me like the bolts go down through here through the standoff. I think it's these two I think it's these two holes right here. So I'm turn it upside down. One, got one bolt through. And close with the other bolt. I got them both through. Got the nuts through. I have to hope I did this correctly and don't have to do it over again. Maybe I need some tweezers too. Get these nuts on. On the PDF I'm looking at, it's a, it's a CAD image, period design image of the parts. It's not an actual picture. So it does make it a little trickier to figure out. So next we have to attach the battery holder to the base. It'll go into these two holes right here. we we'll use a couple of the M3 countersunk head screws and a couple of the M3 nuts. A couple of screws out. A couple of nuts out. Looking at the diagram on the PDF, yeah, these are going to be our two holes. So just to the right of this um, this rectangle, and the wires are going to be going toward the the inside. So line this line this up. Insert the. trouble inserting these screws. I'll use the screwdriver to help me. 
first one through. Passing it to the nut. Turn the video, you're seeing a lot of the back of my hand instead of the parts. Sorry about that. I got the second. Second screw, insert that. Use this wrench to make it a bit tighter. I think it really needs to be all that tight. Like the batteries are gonna fly away. That's what we have. We're gonna attach four of these M3 by eight screws through the base to these M3 by 15 nylon standoffs. I assume we're gonna mount something onto this later, but I don't know what it's going to be. I think the key here is for me to look at this the PDF of the instructions and make sure that I put these through the correct holes. So the first screw I'm going to have going through this hole. thread directly into the standoff so there's not a separate not a separate nut. Okay. It's the first one. This next one I'm gonna do you can see I have to move the suction cup out of the way slightly in order to get the screw through. It's two of the four. Looks like the next ones are near the battery holder. And for the fourth one, again, we have the battery holder. Okay, hold this up so you can see where those four go. Now the drive that we've already worked on is going to mount on the four standoffs that we just attached to the, the base and to do that we're going to use four of these M3 by 5 screws. I have to say there are a ton of, uh, it's quite the variation of fasteners that are provided in this kit which um, you know, for 
purpose of installing it is just fine. You have to keep track of it. But I know as a um, hadn't worked as an automotive engineer, this would never have flown with our assembly plants. They would have said it's way too complex to have this many fasteners um, and the risk of um, the misassembly would be too great and they would make us uh, go more common fasteners instead of having a different fastener for almost every uh, application. Three screws in, one more to go. I don't have the biggest fingers in the world, but I certainly don't have the smallest. And I definitely don't have the steadiest one, so a little tough for me to this. So the next step, um, I'm going to use four of these M3 by 8 screws that will be driven into four of the M3 by 30 nylon standoffs because we're going to be um, mounting something else on this base. Again, I don't know at this point what um, what we're going to be mounting. Let's get four more screws. Four standoff. Uh, there aren't so many holes over here on this side of the uh, base, so it should be somewhat uh, easy to for us to figure out where where the screws go. First standoff in. Second standoff in. We'll find out. I'm guessing we're going to need another acrylic piece that will mount on here, but again, that's just a guess. haven't looked ahead at the instructions. Take a few of these acrylic, <coughs> excuse me, a few of these acrylic discs and attach them together, and also attach them to the uh, first servo using one of these M2 by 10 screws uh, and one of the M2 by 10 nuts. The servo goes here. The Big disc goes over it. <clears throat> the small disc goes over that. And then need to insert the screw. I tell them I have some fun 
trying to get this nut on. Hello, I may have done it. If you watch the a deep video on how to assemble this, you can see they have a person with the most nimble hands ever doing it. Right, so now we have a servo attached to the disc to sit this bearing down on top of those discs. The next thing will be to attach the disc to our base plate. And to do that, we'll use four of these M3 by 8 screws. Stand off, and I just need to make sure I orient this correctly. Looks like kind of this gap in that rectangle is in the direction of the drive. So I'll orient it this way. Two screws down, two to go. And the final one. Tighten all these. So the next step is to attach this rocker arm to this disc using a couple of the self-tapping screws that were um, in the servo container with the rocker arm. Now there are four different screws that were in the container with the rocker arm. Only two of those um, screws are common. So there are three different types of screws. Um, two that are just different and then two that are the same. So I'm going to assume that it's two that are the same. They're the self-tapping screws that I want to use. So You can see there are two holes on each side, and looking at this PDF, it's the outboard. It's the outboard holes that these screws go through. And there are little holes on the rocker, but I need to make sure that whichever ones we use put the put the rocker right in the center. Got it started on one side. Start on the other side. It's interesting, it's the third most outboard hole on the one side and the second most outboard hole on the other side. So uh, it looks like it's in the center, but I hope I'm doing this correctly. So 
Now I have to attach two other uh, rocker arms to this acrylic arm. Now these rocker arms for this one are just the ones that have um, the tab on one side, not both. And actually, um, you have to... Each servo only has one of those arms, so you'll have to take the rocker ar one rocker arm from one servo container another one from another container unless I'm also going to need to get two of the self-tapping screws Two rocker arms. I have two self tapping screws. Okay, and there we go. I have both rocker arms attached to this acrylic arm. The next step is to attach this servo to these two acrylic pieces like this except something that complicates this is that I broke um, this piece into two uh, when I was uh, detaching the release film uh, I have to say it didn't take much to to break this just a little tug on that paper um, so the, the manufacturers really should have made this a little bit thicker so that it didn't break off that easily. Uh, I don't think it's going to impact the uh, the function of it because uh, there will be screws. Um, this is more of a spacer and it's going to have screws going through the top and bottom. So I think it'll be okay, but it's probably going to complicate it. Um, be a little more complicated as I assemble it. So to do this, I'm going to use two of these M2 by 10 screws and two M2 nuts. First screw will go through the top hole right there. Then it's going to go through this broken piece. So I make sure it's going to line up okay. Looks like it's going to line up fine. Oops. this I got another tricky part maybe to get this small nut into place. I was shocked, but I think I was able to do. So now I'll slide the remainder of the spacer and grab my other other screw. Here it is. Drops it. So I got the screw to go through the first acrylic piece, through the second acrylic spacer, through the slot in the servo. I got my tiny little M2 nut in place.
if he actually got it. So you can see two screws going down through the first acrylic piece, through the second acrylic spacer, through the uh, grooves, the slots in the uh, servo, and holding it all together. So I've actually had a one day delay in uh, this assembly because I didn't realize that this required 3.7 volt batteries which are um, as in my mind somewhat uh, unusual but um, my wife was on an outing today and she was able to pick up some of these batteries for me so I'll continue. So now I need to energize the drive and connect the servo so they'll go there initial um, position. So I taped the ribbon uh, in place so I can remove these um, batteries when I need to. Install the first battery. Installed the second battery. Um, Actually, I already installed these wires from the battery holder to the drive. Um, there's a uh, kind of airproofing mechanism in here in the automotive industry called a pokey oak, just a Japanese word for airproofing. Um, so there's really only one way uh, it allows you to connect those two wires, and that's the correct way. So on the back side of this, I'll go ahead and turn it on. You can see the green light indicating that it's on and now I need to start plugging in the servos so that they'll go to their initial position. I have to uh, plug them in the, the right way so that the, um, on the driver it's yellow, red, black. The wires are actually uh, orange, red, brown. We can assume, assume that orange is supposed to be yellow. Uh, the horizontal servo goes to one. So from the way you're looking at me, that's the um, most uh, furthest from you. Uh, then this one that I've already started assembling, this goes to two. little writing it says uh, on the driver that gives the number and then I have three more servos that I haven't done any um, installation with so for these it really doesn't matter what order I Install them. I'm going to use an M2.5 by 7 screw to attach this arm to this servo, which I'm calling servo number 2. Bolt out. And my arm my arm over the servo. Sit straight up. Taking advantage of the fact that these screws are magnetic, so they stick to the tip of the screwdriver, which is nice, and they're attached. I'm going to take two M2x10 screws, 
two M2 nuts, and we're going to attach these two acrylic pieces, one arm, one spacer. You'll note the spacer is the same identical piece to the one that broke um, on me for the other arm. I'm attaching these to um, the servo that is wired as servo number three. these bolts through the arm first then through the spacer so kind of the fatter part of the spacer right there goes on the top top of the arm okay I have both the screws through. This is my servo and I want I'll call the shorter end of the servo to be kind of shorter direction arm. That's good. I'm gonna go ahead and take this glove off. Try to get a nut in place. Nut lined up. Got my screwdriver. I got one one screw driven into the nut. I to get the other one. these two millimeter parts. I think I'm making progress. Okay, looks like I got it. So I have two arm linkages and I need to connect them together again using the M2.5 by 7 screw. So let's get this screw out. It's just like this so that the servo sticks in the rocker arm
screwdriver. And switching to this different screwdriver. I actually noticed in the video that Adeep provided that they would occasionally use a different screwdriver, one that wasn't provided in the packaging, but now they're connected. Now the instructions are telling me to take this set of arms and then to mount it to this disc. And to do that, they're saying use the um, M3 by 12 screw with the um, M3 nut. And the nut started on the bolt. Okay. So now the nut is captured by these acrylic pieces. And hand Tightening this. Use my screwdriver. Get tighter still. And there we go. So I'm going to create a linkage with these three acrylic pieces. I'll connect them with two M3 by 12 screws and two M3 locking nuts. And they're not going to be um, it's not going to be completely tight because these are linkages, and we want them to be able to pivot freely. Screws gonna come to this piece, then to this kind of like dog bone looking piece, and then I'll make the Attachment using this nut. Right now, cross threaded, now it's good. Okay, it's attached. Now I'll do. The other side. Screws going through this one first. And through the other side of the dog bone linkage. Locking it with the nut. Now they can all pivot. So I ran out of power on my camera, so I failed to film that I uh, attached this linkage right here to the disc um, by using the um, um, using this bolt right here and the, the M3 nut. Um, so I did that uh, using the same method that I had done when I attached the, the arm on the other side. Okay, I think what I'm supposed to do now is connect this robotic arm on the right with this linkage on the left so it just becomes one 
robotic arm. And to do that, I'm going to have one of these two uh, acrylic pieces between them. And I think that you pick the one based on, I think this is a, um, the application and building here is for like a writing robotic arm. So I think if you're going with like a magic marker or something big that will go through here, not like this pencil, you would go with this piece. And to tell you the truth, I, I did already install this one and found out it didn't work um, for this pencil that I plan to use, which fits better in here. So I broke it down, and now I'm going to go ahead and install this one right here. So, even though I've done this before, still not all that confident with it. Okay. So first, put the acrylic piece that fits, fits in here. It's kind of dark. I'll take this little M3 nut and it fits. Drop the nut. Um, put the nut fit in this acrylic piece. Try to balance it. Two acrylic pieces together. Try to balance that. Take an M3 by 8 screw, insert it through the one acrylic piece into the nut. Now the nut's captured. I'm going to attach the two of those together. I'm going to try to find the nut that I dropped. I did. It's just right here on the base of the arm. I just try to balance this nut and the acrylic piece. I'm going to take the linkage right here, connect the linkage to this other piece of that okay. insert the nut place take my screwdriver that in place. Then, this wasn't really called out well in the instructions, but I think I'm supposed to take an M3 by 30 spacer, and then maybe I'm going to try the M3 um, by 8 bolts. So actually, I know it's going to work alright, just I hope I don't need to use those bolts somewhere else. And an extra, extra support. Put it on the right. I need to bolt it on the left.
So this is what I've ended up with. Now I'm supposed to take an M3 by 12 screw, an M3 nut and use those to hold my pencil in place and pencil they also provided this little little six inch ruler little square gauge They said the pencil should be mounted 60 millimeters up. So, 60 millimeters, 6 centimeters, I'll make a little I'm trying to make a little mark. I have a pen. Make a little mark on my pencil. Not doing a great job of it. I failed to capture the last two steps on video, and what those were um, is to hold the pencil uh, in place to this acrylic piece uh, using a captured. Uh, M3 nut, so I placed the nut in that uh, groove, and then I took an M3 uh, by 18 screw, and I drove that through the nut, and I pinched the uh, pencil in place. Now this is actually a bigger, a longer screw. Uh, the directions had recommended a uh, an M3 by 12 screw I think it was, so I had to go with one of those six millimeters longer. Uh, maybe if I was using a fatter pencil, the recommended one would have, would have worked, but uh, I ended up needing something uh, longer for this pencil. And then the, uh, the final step, um, so this whole robotic arm piece was loose and wasn't uh, attached to the uh, horizontal servo. This not much light, but this thing at the bottom right here actually um, controls the the movement. Um, so there's a it's one of the self tapping one of the self tapping screws right there at the center of this um, that I drove. So it's um, a rocker arm. Is bolted underneath this disc and this is the one where um, these two screws just were supposed to be started not um, not tight which is important because um, this screw right here in this rocker um, need to be low enough to reach the um, reach the servo uh, which they they are so that was the final uh, step so now um, go ahead and show the show this thing um, in action. So we have servos one, two, and three are controlled by these blue knobs. So I'll go ahead and turn one. I turned it the wrong way. So I want to turn it down right here. Try to get it to right on the um, pad. So now I'll turn servo the knob for servo three. I turned that one the wrong way first. I went down. So now it's on. Um, on the paper, so I'll turn oops, 
bring one back and forth, but I don't have enough pressure to actually do any writing, so I'll turn, try to turn three. There we go, I think there might be some pressure now. And I'm doing a little bit of writing on the, the paper, so that was fun, but now I'll go ahead and try to return this whole thing to the original position. Which I finally did. So there it is. That's the uh, a deep uh, robotic arm. Um, please consider giving items to USA Gutter Services. Um, give me a call to uh, arrange that if you have any excess uh, components that you're able to uh, to spare. Uh, these robotic arms are a lot of fun, uh, but USA Gutter Services does have a serious mission to try to decrease ladder fall deaths and injuries.